Uh, originally, the concept for John Der Vigilante came from 1996 after the Port Arthur Massacre. Um, I remember uh, Martin Bryant's photo being in the papers the next day and everybody was saying, oh, you could see it in his eyes. And I actually sat there and I thought, you know what? The day before it happened, he was the same as you or I or anybody else. And then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to write a movie from a killer's perspective? So that was kind of the initial uh, concept from there. But then I took it even further of, well, what if this guy's got logic only? And then as um, the years went past and the idea started to bubble away, I wrote it into a short film and then I you know, wrote a larger treatment of it. And uh, it kind of just grew from there as far as, um, you know, these little things that were inspiring me along the way, like, uh, you know, media manipulation and all of these other things that I wanted to bring into it. So, but it didn't really come to life until I met Steve Coates in 2008. Uh, and that's when, you know, he and I sat down together and said, right, these are the elements that we really love, let's just bring this thing to life. The budget was three million, um, which is massively moderate, even at Australian standards. Uh, and there wasn't really favours pulled, it was just about being creative. You know, at the end of the day, adversity breeds creativity. So, um, the other thing that I had in my court was that a big influence for me as a director is David Fincher. And one of my most favourite films is Seven. So uh, what intrigues me about Seven is everybody says it's so violent, yet you actually never see anything. <clears throat> and in this day and age where violence is just to the point of gratuitous and desensitising almost, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do as well was to not highlight the violence and make a lot of it implied through off screen or sound or whatever. And, uh, you know, so that actually saves you money. You know, you're not having to build a prosthetic body or head or something like that, you know, it's all implied and the brain is far more powerful and poignant than any visual effect that we could ever do. So, you know, let the brain do the, the work and hopefully we've told a good enough story that you'll, uh, you'll go with it. Every time you make a film, it's a battle. You go to war and you come out and, you know, you've got the resilience to endure. And if it's in your blood, you always do. But, you know, sometimes you just come out of war and you go, you know what, I just need to take a little bit of a break. Just need to regather my strength again. And also, you know, think of what that next step is. Because the other big lesson that we learned with John Doe was that, you know, growing up, I always heard that, do your point of difference. What's your point of difference? That's what all of them say to you. The biggest lesson that I've learned, particularly out of Hollywood, is they don't want a point of difference. Now more than ever, it's a mathematical equation and you need to have this, 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 and this, which equals X amount of bums on seats. Now, you know, occasionally that goes pear-shaped, but essentially that's how callous it is now, and there's no care nor thought to the creative process. The biggest obstacles that have come with the film has really been the back end. So we were pretty much touched by the hand of God, for lack of a better saying, to begin with, because we were fortunate enough that one investor read the script and said, I'm going to give it a dash and just went bam and put a check on the table, which never happens. Never, ever, ever happens that easily. Um, and even going into production, everybody that we spoke to couldn't believe that the money was all in the bank. We were there, we were ready to roll. So we had the dream uh, beginning, the dream pre-production, the dream shoot. And as soon as we got into post-production, things started to go a little bit pear-shaped. But as soon as uh, the film was finished, it was even worse. And I think it's because it's... Um, you know, a pretty politically charged film. Um, it's not particularly politically correct these days. It, uh, it's obviously volatile, it's confrontational, it's hard hitting. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing too, which has been really interesting to observe, particularly, you know, obviously you do test screenings and you get your um, uh, responses back, and so, you know, we get to read all of them. And, um, even people that I know that have seen it, it's, there's a, there seems to be a divide with the viewer in that if you're middle to lower class, you get it and you really get it. And the upper class don't. And we've been sitting there racking our heads over and thinking, why? You know, and the, the, the problem is that the upper class is the distributors as well. And, you know, the reality is whether the people want to accept it or not, you know, the upper class gets to buy the best lawyers. So they probably believe in the system. You know, you've got people like O.J. Simpson getting away with murder. Well, because he's got the best lawyer who can manipulate it. You know, the average person on the street, you or I, 
he gets the poor legal aid kid to come in and help him out who can't know all those loopholes and he doesn't have the finesse and that that these other guys have. So that's been a really interesting, and you know, I'm not saying that that's the case, but that seems to be the only logical explanation is why is it that you know these kind of people don't get it because they probably think it is a dangerous film and that it's not. Um, you know how people think but you know other people I mean again and this has happened all around the world I had people coming up at the end of there's not one screening that I've ever had been to where people haven't come up at the end and they're just so dramatically affected by it in some way that they want to say oh my god this is amazing thank you for making this film you know I've been a victim of uh, violent crime this has you know, had such an impact on me I've never had anything that heinous happen to me thank god um, but I very much empathise with people that have. But the other thing too is, I mean, to be quite frank, I think that, you know, you'd have to be a sociopath not to empathise with decent people's plights. You know, when there's clearly things that go pear-shaped, you know, Jill Ma, everybody knows the story across Australia with what happened to that poor lady, you know, 26 prior convictions that guy had, and then he turns around and says, I told Rob or whatever the hell they want to hear so I can get back out on the street again, and you think, there's clearly something wrong there, so no, for me personally, luckily never anything happened, but um, you know, it's just that, I think part of the other thing with the movie is that we all have the conversation at a private level, can you believe what's happened? And we thought, well, why don't we do that at a public level and then see if we can start a discussion. You know, we're not condoning one way or the other, and we're definitely not saying get it, put a mask on and start killing people. Um, it had to be wrapped up in a form of entertainment. So, that, you know, those elements come into play. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, is it going to, you know, give you a prescribed emotional response? Hell yeah. You know, that's probably my proudest moment in the film, that it provokes people. Um, but it also gets them going. You know, at the end of the day, they come up and go, oh, but, you know, why did you do this if they don't like it? Or alternatively, man, yeah, that's fantastic. I can't believe that you did that. So that's really the main goal of the film is just to uh, get people talking. If I was to summarise John Doe uh, and you know say what is it, it's a social commentary and it's basically being designed to incite conversation within the community. Uh, it's not an action movie, it's not a horror movie, it's not a drama, it's not a documentary, um, it's kind of got elements of everything but it's not really like anything else that you've seen per se. Uh, it's hard to watch, it's not easy to watch, it's very dense, it's very layered. If you're going to watch it, turn everything else off and give it the attention that it deserves because then you'll get the most out of it. Uh, and, you know, try and just go in with an open mind because it will provoke you and it will push you and prod you and hopefully, uh, you know, have some sort of positive effect on